Thank you very much, Kingdom Praises. Hallelujah. Could the people of God worship the Lord in the house? Could the people of God lift their hands and shout hallelujah? Could you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We give God thanks that indeed he's our shield. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who lifts our head. When we're feeling down, he's there for us. When no one regards us, he says that we are important to him. And he stands with us and lifts us up. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God who is not a respecter of persons. A God who regards all his children as equal. And we give him thanks. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, I greet you well in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing to be with you today. I would like to greet uh, the pastor who is here. They are so straight into the word. Amen. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4. I'm working with the theme for the camp meeting. Walking where Jesus walked. The gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 4. If you have found it, you may say amen. amen. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And afterward, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the glory of them. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Verse 11, and last. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we want to thank you that you sent your son Jesus to walk the face of this earth and to deliver us from our sins so that we can walk in his footsteps. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit would flow in this sanctuary in a very special way at this time. I ask, O oh God, that your anointing would rest upon your manservant. I pray, O oh Father, that someone would hear you even as I speak. For in a real sense, Father, it is your voice that makes the difference. When you speak, you relieve our troubled minds. And so, Father, we pray that you'd speak today. We ask, O oh God, that your Holy Ghost would just uh, flow and dominate and control the atmosphere. And that you would expel any force in within or without this sanctuary that is not of you O oh father 
and that your word would take root in our hearts. We say thanks to you, O God, in the name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Walking where Jesus walked. Charles H. Spurgeon, the acclaimed prince of preachers, uttered his first words in the pulpit of the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London. He said, I would propose that the subject of the ministry of this house, as long as this platform shall stand, and as long as this house shall be frequented by worshippers, shall be the person of Jesus Christ. I am never ashamed to avow myself a Calvinist, he said. I do not hesitate to take the name of Baptist. But if I am asked what is my creed, I reply, it is Jesus Christ. My venerated predecessor, he says, Dr. Gill, has left a theological heritage admirable and excellent in its way. But the legacy to which I would pin and bind myself forever, God helping me, is Jesus Christ, who is the arm and substance of the gospel, who is in himself all theology, the incarnation of every precious truth. Those are the words of Charles Spurgeon. In essence, he was saying that his ministry would revolve around Jesus Christ. Indeed, my sisters and brothers, your theme suggests that you are following in the footsteps of the great Charles Spurgeon. Your aim and focus is Jesus Christ. And this is commendable. It is a noble desire to walk where Jesus walked. Indeed, we should strive to do just that on a daily basis. However, we must be aware of the nature of his walk before we attempt to emulate him or to imitate him and so my sisters and brothers we should understand the nature of jesus's walk before we attempt to walk where jesus walked we should understand the nature of his walk based on three observations from the text that is before us the first observation that i would like to present to us is this that Jesus walked in the spirit. Jesus walked in the spirit. The text tells us that Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Now Jesus started out his ministry with a special baptismal experience in chapter 3. In that experience, we are told that the spirit came upon him in the form of a dove and that was a critical experience for jesus that when when jesus emerged out of the water that a dove it came out of the heavens as it were and the spirit of god came upon him this would mark a major transition in his life and the start of an intense period of ministry preparation Matthew tells us in chapter 4 1 that he was led by the Spirit this is significant my sisters and brothers his first important step towards fulfilling his purpose in God was influenced by the Spirit of God although we are told here in the text that the Spirit led him into the wilderness we know from reading the gospels that the spirit led jesus wherever he went he walked his walk sorry was a spirit driven walk no wonder jesus was so effective now some people would say that jesus was the son of god and he probably did not need the spirit to come upon him the way he did 
But what is critical for us to understand that if Jesus needed to walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit, how much do we as his children need to walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Those of us who seek to walk where Jesus walked must be aware of and willing to experience the leading of the Holy Ghost. Too many persons in the church today, my sisters and brothers, are forgetting the significance of the presence and power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. One moment. Hallelujah. It is important to note that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness or according to the original word into the desert to be tempted. This does not necessarily seem right to some of us as Christians. That, that Jesus was led immediately after his baptism by the Spirit into a desert place. Into a place where there was no water. A place that was dry and parched. A place that was not fruitful. A place where he would have been lonely. But my sisters and brothers, the reality reality is that we relegate the leading of the spirit to spiritual gimmicks and confusing utterances and a lot of noise but when the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus he led him to a place where he would have been alone for a while for a special reason you see many of us refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us where we do not want to go we want him to lead us in a particular direction we want him to lead us to say some particular things we want him to lead us to do some specific things but there are times when the spirit comes upon us and bids us to walk that he leads us in directions in which we do not really want to go but if we are obedient to God we must go under the leading of the Holy Ghost we forget what the psalmist reminds us that although he leads us in the paths of righteousness there are times when we find ourselves in the valley of the shadow of death but the reality is that he is still leading us hallelujah you see there are many Christians in our world today and many Christian leaders who preach a gospel that is not necessarily reflective of the gospel of Jesus and the experience of Jesus. Their gospel is a gospel of prosperity, a gospel of the good life. And they do not balance their gospel with the reality of struggle and suffering that we see in scripture. That even under the leading of the Holy Ghost, Jesus was led to a place of struggle. A place where he would meet, as we would see later on, where he would meet the tempter who would lead him or attempt to lead him in particular directions. But what is important was that the walk of Jesus was a walk under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Even Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. What about those of us today? We say that we are walking where Jesus walked. But sometimes you wonder whether we have forgotten that Jesus was a man filled with the Holy Ghost. Now that is what we are told by the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10 tells us that Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost went about doing good. My sisters and brothers. If we are to walk where Jesus walked, we must walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. We must walk in the spirit. I know that the Eastwood Park Road Church is a Holy Ghost church. Am I correct? Hallelujah. Well, at least when I was around, it was. Hallelujah. I believe that the Eastwood Park Road Church is still a church in which people are walking in the Holy Ghost. My sisters and brothers, we claim that we are Pentecostal. 
But sometimes I've been to some Pentecostal churches and I've wondered whether we have lost our Pentecostal fervor. Hallelujah. I have wondered whether we have lost our Pentecostal push, that which comes from the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. We are told that immediately after his baptismal experience, that Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost. But for some of us, immediately after our baptismal experience, we forget about the Holy Ghost. Oh, my sisters and brothers, if we are to walk where Jesus walked or walked especially in the 21st century we should not forget about the power the presence and the leading of the Spirit of God we must remember that this church was born in the Holy Ghost this church has survived because of the leading of the Holy Ghost and this church will move forward because there's a remnant in the Eastwood Park Road Church oh I, am I talking to somebody there is a remnant in the Eastwood Park Road Church that will walk in the Holy Ghost hallelujah oh yes oh yes oh yes hallelujah yes spirit of God hallelujah Dwight L. Moody Another outstanding preacher was to have a campaign in England. An elderly pastor protested. Why do we need this Mr. Moody? He's uneducated. He's inexperienced. What is he doing here? Who does he think he is anyway? Does he think he has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit? A younger, wiser pastor rose and responded. No, but the Holy Ghost has a monopoly on Mr. Moody. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, I can tell you that there are many persons in the church in the church of God and maybe right here in the Eastwood Park Road Church who are saying that some of us act as if we have a monopoly on the Holy Ghost because we are walking in the spirit but what they do not understand is that we do not have a monopoly on the Holy Ghost but that the Holy Ghost has a monopoly on our lives hallelujah oh hallelujah Jesus walked in the spirit into the wilderness. My sisters and brothers, when you're walking in the spirit, it is not all rosy for you. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, when you begin to walk in the spirit, then you should be open to wherever the Lord would lead you through the spirit. Sometimes he will lead you through the valley. Sometimes up on the mountain top. But wherever God leads you, you've got to be willing to go. Oh, hallelujah. When you are under the influence of the spirit, it doesn't matter who you are. God will lead you to do some things and to say some things that you yourself might not understand but you have got to move when God gets ready for you and you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost you have got to move oh hallelujah and when you move you might not like where you end up but you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah my sisters and brothers if ever, if there ever was a time when we need people to walk in the spirit, it is now. Hallelujah. It is now. We are living in a day and age when many people are growing weary. Many people are growing tired. It is as if it's church as usual in many local churches. Oh, we are going through the motions. Hallelujah. But there is always a remnant. I believe that. 
the remnant theology of the Old Testament applies to the New Testament that there is always a remnant that is walking in the spirit oh hallelujah whose eyes are open there is always a remnant who are moving in the Holy Ghost who will never allow the forces of darkness to overpower the church and to crush the servants of God there is always a remnant that is walking in the spirit now now let me explain something to you Jesus came on the scene when there was a, a, there was this a, this atmosphere of expectation that the Messiah was gonna come and the Messiah did come they were expecting a particular kind of Messiah they were expecting a political Messiah like many people in Jamaica are expecting some kind of political Messiah they were expecting somebody to deliver them from Roman bondage. But Jesus came as a different kind of Messiah. He was the son of God kind of Messiah. Or son of man kind of Messiah. He was the Messiah who come or who came filled with the Holy Ghost. Going about healing and delivering people, raising the dead. He did not meet their expectations. The same thing applies in the church today. That people expect that when you are in a particular church, that you'll operate a particular way. That you'll be a particular kind kind of person but when the Holy Ghost is upon you you just never know where God will lead you how he will guide you what he will tell you to wear or not to wear what he will tell you to say or not to say you have got to be ready when the Holy Ghost is come upon you hallelujah hallelujah oh yes Walking where Jesus walked. I would rather the Holy Ghost have a monopoly on me. Hallelujah. There are some people in the Eastwood Park Road Church. Oh, the Holy Ghost has a monopoly on you. And some people are wondering how you're so spiritual, how you're so noisy. Oh, how you walk about the church so much. But they do not understand that when the Holy Spirit is upon you, when you are walking in the Holy Ghost, you have no other choice but to do what you do. Do what you do. Some people might not understand. Oh, yeah, they might not fit with their theology or their theological perspective on reality or on their biblical perspective on life but when the spirit is upon you he might not lead you to a palace he might lead you to a broken down house somewhere when the Holy Ghost is upon you he might lead you into the wilderness but you should rest assured that you are walking in the spirit that there is nothing greater than being in the spirit no matter where you are going you are under the influence of the Holy Holy Ghost! Oh, Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus walked in the Spirit. We should walk in the Spirit as well. My sisters and brothers, I do hope that there are people in this church who are seeking to walk in the Spirit. Because I tell you that the forces of darkness, they have been let loose in the church. They are fighting against the pastors in the church. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Are you aware of the fact that so many pastors are struggling? So many pastors are falling. There is a spirit that has been released in the church of God. And that spirit wants to bring down pastors. But I know that there are some people in the Eastwood Park Road Church, in the Waltham Park Road Church, in the Roden Crescent Church, in the Old Harbor Church, in the Montego Bay Church, in the Mandeville Church, in the George's Valley Church, that there are people who are still walking in the spirit because they know 
that if they fail to walk in the Holy Ghost, that the church will be crushed. Oh my God, there is a group of people in the church of God who remembers where we are coming from, who will never allow the cold water of the enemy to be thrown over the church, but they will keep their eyes open. They will keep walking in the Holy Ghost, no matter what is going on around them. They are Holy Ghost people. Hallelujah. Could I hear a shout of hallelujah from the Holy Ghost people in the house? Hallelujah. Church, I'm serious. Enough. I'm serious about it. There's a spirit released in the church of God wanting to bring down the ministry. Hallelujah. But guess what? Ah, it's not going to happen. A few of us might fall. Ah, but there are people who are walking in the spirit. Some of them have been led into the wilderness. And that leads me to the second point. Jesus walked in the spirit. The second observation is this. That Jesus walked in prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in verse 2, And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. It is amazing that Jesus, the Son of God, prayed and fasted the way he did. Although the Spirit was leading him, he still engaged in lengthy, purpose-driven prayer and fasting. Jesus never thought that he was too spiritual or too spirit-filled for fasting and prayer. Jesus, although he was God, never said, I am divine, I do not need prayer and fasting. He never demonstrated that he had reached a point in his spiritual life where fasting was unnecessary. As he was about to embark, embark on an act, activity filled ministry he knew that fasting and prayer were necessary the text suggests that we can, cannot walk where Jesus walked without being engaged in purpose driven fasting and prayer do you hear me church for us to walk where Jesus walked we must be willing to fast for long hours we must prepare ourselves for a life of prayer and fasting that will bring about miraculous experiences in the church. My sisters and brothers, many people today see little value in walking in prayer and fasting. However, those of us who have experienced the power of prayer and fasting know that we should not, we should not, well, we would not, sorry, have overcome some powerful temptations and won some fierce battles without prayer and fasting. Oh, church, are you hearing me today? The great revivalist Charles Finney once said that sometimes I would find myself in a great measure empty of the power of the Spirit. I would go and visit and find that I made no saving impression. I would exhort and pray with the same results. I would then set apart a day for private fasting and prayer. Oh, hallelujah. After humbling myself and crying out for help, the power would return upon me with all its freshness. This has been my experience all my spiritual life. Oh, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, that has also been my experience. There have been times when I thought that I was some super Christian. That I have reached a point in my life where I did not need to pray. Nor I did not need to fast. But it was during those times when I experienced some of my greatest challenges. It was during those times when I found myself on my face sometimes. It was during those those times when I lived a life of defeat but when I got back to prayer when I got back to fasting it was then I experienced the power of the Holy Ghost in my life again does the EPR church know about the power of prayer and fasting or do we still fast in this church 
Aleluia Talk about walking where Jesus walked Jesus saw the importance of prayer and fasting What about us? What about us? A question to us today is how many of us engage in regular prayer and fasting? How many of us? Have we forgotten about the power of prayer? Oh, hallelujah. There are some of us who are wrestling with some very difficult situations. There are some of us who are wrestling with some very troubling circumstances. But I declare to you that if you only pray and fast for a while, that God will come through for you. I can guarantee you that. As I reflect upon scripture, I remember a time when Jesus and, his, and some of his disciples were on a mountain and they had a tremendous spiritual experience. Oh, I think it was Moses and Elijah appeared and they did not want to leave that Mount of Transfiguration. But they had to leave anyway. You see, the thing about it is that our spiritual experiences do not last forever on this earth. Some of us would like them to last forever, like Peter, but they do not last forever. We have to leave the mountain top and go down to the valley to face the realities of life when Jesus left the mountain top and went into the valley we are told that a man approached him and said master please help me I took my son to your disciples oh my son has a vexed spirit who would throw him down he would fraught and he would be uncontrollable but your disciples could not help him but Jesus looked at the man I looked at his disciples first and said oh ye of little faith then he looked at the young man and he spoke to the spirit and said get out of the young man oh and the spirit came out of him immediately his disciples went to Jesus and said master how come we could not deal with that devil Jesus looked at them and said I want you to understand there is a lesson you have got to learn that this kind there is a kind of demonic force there is a challenge that is before us of times that this kind oh there are some challenges we might overcome without prayer and fasting wow but there are some other challenges this kind oh hallelujah I believe somebody is struggling in this house today. I believe that you have a, a major issue that you're facing today. But Jesus says this kind, this particular issue, this challenge goeth not out but by prayer and by fasting. Some people need to get back down on their knees again. Oh, hallelujah. I do not know. But some of us, we haven't been on our knees in a long time. Some of us, we haven't cried out to heaven in a long time oh hallelujah oh have you been to I heard someone asking at church the other day have you been to Nice City oh hallelujah have you been to Nice City as a student of theology I could ask you have you studied neology have you lived the neology oh hallelujah the enemy doesn't want to see a child of God on his knees oh hallelujah there is power in prayer there is power in fasting when you pray and fast something happens in your spirit oh my God my God hallelujah Jesus was about to embark on a challenging ministry. He prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. My sisters and brothers, do we want miracles to happen at the Eastwood Park Road Church? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 
Why do we want the hand of God to move in this local church? Ah, hi. I am calling for some prayer warriors. Where are the prayer warriors of the Eastwood Park Road Church? Where are the intercessors? Ah, hallelujah. You want to walk where Jesus walked? You've got to arise. Where are the people who have been blessed with the gift of prayer? Oh, arise, CPR. Arise. Get down on your knees. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the ministers are depending on you. The church is depending on you. There are miracles to perform. There are healings to experience. But we have got to get down on our knees again. Oh, Jesus. My sisters and brothers. What I'm talking to you is my experience. I have found that whenever I don't pray, whenever I don't fast, sometimes I'm able to speak well because I have the gift. And I pull it off. But I found that I may, I may pull it off, but I may not have the kind of impact that I should have. I have found that when I go down on my knees and I'm not talking any, anything that I haven't experienced. I have found that whenever I go down on my knees before I, I stand before the people of God. That something special happens within me. That something extraordinary moves upon me. I have found that when I do that and I cry out to God and say, God, I am helpless here. I am hopeless. I, I need you, oh God, I need you. I need you every hour. Oh, most gracious Lord. Oh, when I cry out on my knees and I stand before the people of God, something extraordinary happens. I do not know what happens, but it seems as if prayer and fasting unlocks the very door of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. If the Eastwood Park Road Church is to become a church where miracles happen, where there are healings on a regular basis, I need the prayer warriors. Oh, there are some prayer warriors who have grown cold in the Eastwood Park Road Church. God has placed upon you the spirit of intercession and you have gone to bed. Awake, Zion, awake. Oh, hallelujah. Awake, Zion. Zion, awake! We need more prayer warriors. We need more fasting people. Oh, Jesus! Be awake! Oh, Jesus! There are some people in this church who have been struggling for years some intractable, some stubborn challenges, some physical problems. Don't tell me that the power of God is not available to the church. Hallelujah. But the challenge is that we do not pray the way we used to. Do you remember those times, church? Do you remember the times when you used to spend hours on your knees? Do you remember the times when you used to come to church? When it was fasting and you fasted for hours. And God did great things in your life. Now God has blessed you. He has prospered you. And you have forgotten how to pray. You have forgotten how to fast. Well, God is rebuking somebody in the house today. God is saying to somebody, Arise! Awake out of your slumber. Get down on your knees. There are things to be done. There are people to be healed. There are miracles to happen. But you have got to awake. Hallelujah. Jesus walked in the spirit. Jesus walked in prayer and fasting. Finally, Jesus walked in the word. Jesus walked in the word. Do you hear that church? This is a tremendous reality. His life was lived on the foundation of the word of God. This is evident from his response to the devil's well-crafted temptations. Satan the tempter knew that Jesus was a special gift to the world on a special mission. He attempted to derail Jesus by getting him to focus on meeting his needs in his own way. But Jesus responded. When Satan approached him and said, 
you're hungry. Command that these stones be made bread. Jesus said, it is written. Hallelujah. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The devil decided to intensify the temptation and took him in a situation where Jesus could have made a move that could have demonstrated to the Jews that he was the Messiah. However, it was not God's plan. And Jesus responded again and said, responded with the word. Again, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Finally, without any shame in his face, Satan promised Jesus the kingdoms of the world after taking him to a very high mountain. If only Jesus would worship him. However, Jesus crushed his plan with the word. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Be gone, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Jesus successfully thwarted the plans of the devil and crushed his schemes by walking in the word. Oh, hallelujah he knew the word and released the word to counter the crafty temptations of the devil the challenge that we have today is that many of us do not even attempt to read the word oh am i not say saying the right thing could i hear an amen much less to release it when we are tempted we caught the psalmist who says thy word have i hidden in my heart that i might not sin against thee but when we are tempted we forget the word to be effective, lawyers must know the law. Am I not correct? To be effective, doctors must know medicine. Am I not correct? To be effective, computer technicians must know the computer. Am I not correct? So, how could the child of God ever think that he or she can be effective without knowing the word? Oh my God, my God, my God. My sisters and brothers, I have a burden for the church because of a lack of knowledge of the word. When you call a Bible study, if you have, if you have a quarter of the church there, you have a lot. And that is a challenge that we have in the church of God right now. That the people aren't hungry for the word anymore. But let me tell you something. That Jesus counteracted the devil through the word jesus declared it is written god the story has been told about several famous preachers but it actually happened to joseph parker minister of the city temple in london an old lady waited on parker in his vestry after a service to thank him for the help she received from his sermons the old lady said you do throw such wonderful light on the bible doctor do you know that until this morning Listen to the old lady. I had always thought that Sodom and Gomorrah were man and wife. That before the sermon that day, she always thought that Sodom and Gomorrah were man and wife. Oh my Jesus. What a ridiculous thing. My sisters and brothers, I declare to you today that if you know the word... If you live in the word, if you walk in the word, you shall live a life of victory. There are too many defeated Christians in the church of God. Oh, we are defeated because we do not live the word. We do not quote the word. We do not release the word. Oh, hallelujah. The enemy attacks us and we do not attack him back. Don't you know that the word is like an attacking weapon? It is an offensive weapon. When you know the word, you are armed and dangerous am I talking to somebody when you know the word the enemy might try to confuse you but you know the word remember the enemy caught in the word to Jesus the enemy said if you throw yourself down the Bible says oh God don't you know that Satan knows the Bible too don't you know that Satan knows the Bible too Satan says the Bible says he will give his angels charge concerning you to lift you up to hold you in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone but you see the enemy oh boy he's very crafty if it was one of us we would have said you know devil you're right you know devil you're so right <laughs> but Jesus knew better than that Jesus said aha uh -huh. you think me I know you know the word but let me give you another word oh hallelujah 
that you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Oh, hallelujah. The enemy knows the word. The enemy comes into the church and he uses the word conveniently. Oh, I know that people in EPR know the word. I was speaking to a sister when I just came, Reverend Gordon. And the sister said, you know, pastor, I have been here since dirt. Gotten good preaching. I've got good teaching from Reverend Blair. I'm grounded in the word. And I believe that there are other people here who are grounded in the word. But the challenge is there are many other people out there in the world. The moment they hear that somebody with a, with a particular name is coming, some prophet this, and some evangelist this, and some missionary that, they believe every word that comes out of their mouth. Can I talk to you, Pierre? Oh, but when a local brother stands up, we do not want to hear the brother because the brother is coming from nowhere. As Jesus said, the prophet has no honor in his own hometown, but the brother has the word, and we don't want to hear the word. We want to hear missionary John, and we want to hear prophetess this and bishop that. But let me tell us something that there is a word, there is a real a word for everybody in this house and when the word gets to you oh, you have got to move when the enemy comes upon you oh like a flood you know that the spirit of the Lord will empower you with the word you have got to know the word oh, oh you have got to know the word from Genesis to revelation you have got to have the word in your spirit hallelujah can we go through the word in Genesis he is the creator oh hallelujah do you hear me do you hear me in Exodus, he's the liberator. Oh, hallelujah. In Leviticus, he's a high priest. Hallelujah. In Numbers, he's the one who leads us. Oh, in Deuteronomy, he's the one who prepares the way for the conquest. In Joshua, he's a conqueror. Oh, conquering unto conquer. In Judges, he's the judge of all judges. In First and Second Samuel, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, in First and Second Kings, oh, he's a standard bearer. In First and Second Chronicles, he's our ancestor. Oh my Jesus in Ezra he's the restorer oh in Nehemiah he's the builder of the wall oh, Jesus in Esther in Esther he's the protector of his people oh in Job Why? oh my God Oh, hallelujah. I hear Job say, Oh, Job, Job, Job. I know that my Redeemer lives. When the enemy comes to you and says to you, And I see you, and I have nothing, nothing I'll go on for you. Oh, my God, look at Sister So and so. Things are going for you. Just pop off the word, man. Just say, Satan, I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah! And in the end, he shall stand on this earth. And though my flesh be destroyed, yet in my flesh will I see God. 
In Job, he's the redeemer. In Psalms, hallelujah, he is the one to whom we lift our hands and bow our knees. He is the ancient of days. He is the one who was and is and is to come. Oh, in the Proverbs, he is wisdom personified. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Isaiah, oh, he is the son of God. He is the prince of peace. He is the wonderful counselor. In Isaiah, he is the servant of the Lord. In Isaiah, he is the one Isaiah declared. Oh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. In Jeremiah, he is the master potter. In Ezekiel, he's the wheel within the wheel. Oh, in Daniel, oh, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, he's the sovereign God. In Hosea, he's the lover of his people. Ah, oh, hallelujah. In Amos, he is the salvation of Israel. Oh, I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes. Hi. Oh yes, oh yes. In Obadiah, he's a judge of the nations. In Jonah, hallelujah. He's the one who controls nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God. In Micah, hallelujah, he is also the salvation of his people. In Nahum, he's in control of the Gentiles, hallelujah. In Habakkuk, he's the one who justifies by faith. He's the one who gives the vision and we run with the vision. Oh, in Zephaniah, he's the one who stands tall above the nations again. In Haggai, he's the restorer of the temple. In Zechariah, he's the protector of his people. In Malachi, oh, he's the one to whom we give and he gives back to us. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew, oh, he's a son of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about the word. Look at somebody and say, you must know the word. In Mark, he's a son of man. Hallelujah. In Luke, he's the doctor of all doctors. In John, he is the God man. God in the flesh. In Acts, he is the risen and ascended one. Oh, in Romans, he is the one who would restore Israel. In Romans, he is the one who brings about salvation and justification. In First and Second Corinthians, he's the healer of the church. He's the one who dwells in his temple. Oh, hallelujah. In Galatians, he's the one who sets us free. And when we are set free, we are free indeed. In Ephesians, hallelujah. In Ephesians, he's the one who gives us power to fight against the forces of darkness. That we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against wicked spirits in heavenly places. But he grants us his armor. He is our conqueror in Ephesians. In Colossians, he's the one who was nailed to the tree and destroyed the powers of hell and death. Oh, hallelujah. In Philippians, he's the one who supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In First and Second Thessalonians, oh, he is the one who will burst the skies in the rapture. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. In first and second Timothy, he is the pastor of all pastors. The one who guides and leads the young pastors towards success in, in ministry. In Titus, oh, he is the grace of God that brings salvation to all men. Oh, hallelujah. In Philemon, he is the deliverer of the slave. Oh, in Hebrews, he is the one of whom the prophets spoke of, of old. Oh, yes. He is the rest of the people of God. He is the one who entered the veil. Oh, hallelujah. In James. Oh, yes, in James. He is the one who justifies us, not just by faith, but by works. In first and second Peter. Oh, he is the salvation of his people unto the ends of the earth. Oh, in Jude. Oh, hallelujah. He is the one who gives us the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. In first, second, third, John. Hallelujah. He is the one in whom there is life and life forevermore. In Revelation. In Revelation. He is the one who was and is and is to come. Oh, the ancient of days. The one who was dead, but now he is alive. And he's alive forevermore. I am talking about the word. My sisters and brothers, don't make people fool you. Know the word. Know the word for yourself. Be able to interpret it for yourself. Hallelujah. When you know the word, you can't go under that easily. When you know the word, you will stand tall in the, even in the most difficult of circumstances. When you know the word, when the winds and waves of life blow against your ship, you will be anchored. You will be anchored. Hallelujah. You will be anchored. And you will cry out, the anchor holds. Though the ship is battered. Hallelujah. The anchor holds. Though the sails are torn. Because you are able to say. It is written. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers I encourage you today. To walk in the spirit. Walk in prayer and fasting and know the word of God. Know the word of God that will be able to give you life and build you up. And give you a place among those that are sanctified. I encourage the Eastwood Park Road Church to declare when you are in difficult circumstances, it is written. Hallelujah. When you feel lonely, declare it is written. I shall never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. When you feel down and out. Oh, when you feel like you are going through the fire. Declare it is written. Thus says the Lord. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. Oh, when you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. When you go through the floods, you shall not be overwhelmed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, when you feel like you have nothing in this world, when nothing now go on for you, declare the prayer of Jabez. It is written, Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Extend my borders. Oh, hallelujah. When people look at you and say that you are a nobody, declare it is written that now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, that we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. When you feel as if heaven is not your home. When you feel as if oh, you are not going there. But you know you believe in Jesus. Declare it is written. Oh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. 
believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go I, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also oh when you do not know where you are going remember it is written for I am the way I am the truth I am the life oh stand with me church hallelujah hallelujah oh when it is dark in your neck of the woods when it seems like you are not being provided for remember the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me oh when you are going through difficult times when the enemy is upon you when your family is under attack just declare it is written the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemies come upon me to eat up my flesh oh they stumbled and fell though an horse should encamp against me in all this will I be confident one thing I've desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple when you feel like there's a swarm of forces coming up against you declare that it is written that when the enemy comes in upon me like a flood the spirit of the Lord will lift a standard against him that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper somebody needs to go home and walk through his house and walk through her house and declare no weapon weapon that is the word of God we must believe the word of God no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises against me in judgment I shall condemn for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world oh hallelujah hallelujah we shall overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. When you are down and out, just declare that the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about the word. We must walk in the word. We must live the word. We must declare the word. Whatever circumstance you're going through or you're in, there's a word for that circumstance. Speak the word into it. Do you hear that, church? Speak the word into it. And finally, maybe for somebody who needs to hear this, you probably have been struggling. You do not have much at home. I want you to go and do this at home. You know, before I came here, I pray that the Lord will do something special. I want you to go home, open your fridge, open your cupboards. And speak the word of God. It is written. My God shall supply. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Before I came, I said, God, release your spirit of prophecy in this place. And I know somebody needs to hear this word. Open your fridge. It might look foolish, but go home under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Open your fridge. Open your empty cupboards. And declare the word of God. It is written. Let me hear the church say, it is written. Let me hear the church say, it is written. Hallelujah. 
for my God shall supply all my needs Woo! according to his riches in glory Jesus! Oh, Spirit of God! Hallelujah! Some people need to come to the altar right now. Come to the altar right now. You know who you are. The Spirit of God has spoken to your heart. Come right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah! Oh my God! Hallelujah! Jesus! Some of you have been struggling for so long that you're wondering if hands step on you. You have been struggling for so long. You are wondering if they do something to you. You are wondering if people have done you wrong. Hallelujah. But you need to speak the word of God into your life. Hallelujah. I am the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Some people want you to act as if you are the tail. And to live a life. As if you are the tail. But God says you are the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Do you hear this word today? Hallelujah. Oh God, Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. I can't even walk. Without you holding my hands, the mountains Tends to high and the valleys to wide. Down on my knees, I learn to stay. I believe that there might be 
maybe one or two persons still in their seats you need to come up here you know you have a very difficult situation and you want God to deal with that situation I'm gonna believe God for you right now I'm gonna believe God that he would help you to walk in the spirit he would help you to walk in prayer and fasting and to walk in the word hallelujah No, you cannot walk without him holding your hand. So don't stay in your seat right now. Come to the altar and be blessed. Hallelujah. Come to the altar and be blessed. You want to get out of here now. We are way beyond time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. There are so many of God's children at the altar right now. Some of you have some situations dealing with. Man, if you were to only say, you are so overwhelmed by your circumstances. You are crushed by the challenges that you face. God is saying to you today, that if you only attempt to walk where Jesus walked, that your life would never be the same. God is saying to somebody that there is something that you need to do. You need to get back down on your knees again. Somebody, 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 somebody. You haven't been on your knees in a long time. Get down on your knees again. Hallelujah. God is saying that someone needs to go down on his or her knees. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. And you will see what will happen in your life. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh God. Don't look at anybody's face. If the Spirit of God is saying to you, get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. Don't watch any face right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Spirit of God is in this house right now and He's ministering to His children. Hallelujah! I know somebody else needs to go down on his or her knees right now. Right now, right where you are. Don't, 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 don't be concerned about who is beside you. You know you need to go down on your knees. Get down on your knees right now. Hallelujah! If you obey the voice of the Spirit of God, God will do something very special for you today. Hallelujah! Oh God, oh God, oh God. Yeah! I know that there are other children of God who need to go down on your knees. Swallow your pride right now and get down on your knees and you'll see what God will do in your life. Swallow your pride! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh God, your children, some of them are on their knees. I know that there are others who need to go down on their knees. Yes, Lord, they're going, they're going, they're going! Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Some of us, we have not been on our knees in a long time. But God is saying, if you're on your knees, guess what will happen for you? I will release my power in your life. And your circumstances shall change. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Spirit of the living God, I pray that you'll move upon your people in the house right now. Move upon your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, there are so many issues. There are so many challenges, trials, tribulations of various kinds. Oh God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that as your people, as your people are down on their knees, that you'd hear their cries. Oh God, somebody say, I can't walk. I can't live. 
Oh, I can't survive without your holding my hand. Oh, God, hear the cries of your people. Father, many of them have tried to walk where Jesus walked, but they have failed. And others have looked down on them. But God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they will get back on their feet again. I pray that they would walk with Jesus again. I pray, oh God, that they will be able to, to, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Alive in the spirit. Alive in prayer and fasting. And alive in the word. Father, somebody needs you to come through for her. Somebody needs you to come through for him. Oh God, there are bills to be paid. Oh God, there are things to be bought. Father, there are school fees to be taken care of. Oh God, there is this car. Lord.